my name is dr santosh singh working as a associate professor in department of physics institute of aeronautical engineering today i am going to discuss about density of states so it will comes under the broad topic name optoelectronic properties of semiconductors or semiconductor material so actually we are dealing with optoelectronic properties of semiconductor material so this density of state topic it comes under for better understanding of optoelectronic properties of semiconductor material you have to know about density of state of any material not only for semiconductor material so in last video lecture i already discussed something about optoelectronic property where we discussed about effective mass of the material how the effective mass we can calculate so let's for uh, let's start the topic over from the effective mass of charge carrier we already discussed all these things in the last topic but let's quick review about effective mass of charge carrier so how the effective mass will be calculated so it will be calculated from the band structure band structure is nothing but a ek diagram where this thing is represented by conduction band this thing is valence band this axis is your k axis this axis is your e axis so based on the curvature of these bands near the top of valence band and near the bottom of conduction band you have to calculate the curvature of these band and based on that curvature you can calculate the effective mass of charge carrier why because the charge carriers will be moved through these bands inside the semiconductor so generally if the charge carrier is electron so its rest mass is represented by m not and it will be around 9 point into 10 to the power minus 31 kg but if you calculate the effective mass of charge carrier through this bands obviously the electron will be found the free electron will be found in the conduction band so if you want to calculate the effective mass of electron obviously you have to use the conduction band curvature not valence band curvature so once you calculate the effective mass of charge carrier in these bands it will be come very very low comparison to this free mass or rest mass of electron so why this will be become very low comparison to rest mass because these bands assist these electrons or these charge carriers to flow easily or to move easily inside the crystal are inside the semiconductor so here already the uh, effective mass of some charge carrier means for electrons and for holes are given for some very popular semiconductor material like silicon germanium gallium arsenide indium phosphide and gallium phosphide so what you are seeing here the effective mass of electron is 0.98 for silicon and hole 0.49 okay and see here it is different from the rest mass of electron which is around 9.3 into 10 to the power 31 again with the help of these effective masses you can calculate the mobility of electron and holes okay so the mobility of electron is 1450 and 450 for hole in silicon semiconductor in germanium it is 0.08 effective mass of electron effective mass of hole is 0.28 and based on these effective masses the mobility of electron is 3900 and mobility of hole is 1900 now for gallium arsenide case see the effective mass is very very low 0.07 and effective mass of hole is 0.45 and so if the effective mass is very low so mobility will be 
always high okay so see in this case mobility if the effective mass is 0.07 mobility is 8500 for electron and 400 for hole so here hole is heavier so that's why the mobility of hole will be decreased okay so in the case of indium phosphide the effective mass of electron electron which is which will be move in the conduction and 0.07 Effective mass of hole is zero point six four. Okay, so based on these these two values, the mobility of electron and holes are forty six hundred and one fifty. In gallium phosphide case, the effective mass of electron is zero point eight two, and for hole is zero point six zero. And based on these effective masses for charge carrier in gallium phosphide, the mobility of electron is one one zero and seven five. Okay, so these are some calculated value based on the band structure of these semiconductor materials, and with the help of this formula, this is the formula for calculation of effective mass for charge carrier. And effective mass m star is equal to nothing but one upon h cross square upon we got two e by delta k. So this deva two e by deva k two derivative of energy with respect to k second derivative of energy with respect to k how it will come if you calculate the curvature and plot it will give the deva two e by deva k two value and this h cross square is nothing but it will come h cross h cross is h upon two pi where h is Planck constant okay so h cross you can calculate. So h cross is nothing but a kind of constant. Deva two e by deva k two you can calculate from the band structure, calculated band structure. Okay, and by calculating band structure, and by considering the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band part, you can calculate the effective mass of charge carrier of electrons and hole for considered semiconducting. Okay, but so I already told the rest mass of any charge carrier is m naught. Okay, for case electron, the rest mass is m naught, and the effective mass is much much smaller than the rest mass. The effective mass is the mass experienced, or the mass exhibited by an electron when it will move inside the semiconductor, and those bands will assist the charge carrier. That's why it will be lower than its rest mass. Okay, so why like it is given here? Ki as an analogy, if you have a big wooden log and you try to drag it on the ground, it is very heavy. So you will not be able to drag it. Now, if you put that same log in a water, you can move it much more easily because water gives some bouncy force on it, up gives some upward thrust, and hence the log appear to be much lighter to you, and you can drag this log easily. Okay. So exactly like the same way, when the electron is inside the semiconductor, it is moving under the Influence of internal electric field. There are potential variation, and it is affect to the electron so that it move very smoothly. Okay, that's why it appears to be very very light, and hence the effective mass of the electron is much smaller in the conduction band. Accordingly, the mobility is much larger. Okay, so means within the inside the semiconductor material electron will try to move corresponding to the bands and these bands will provide the some kind of additional energy to these electrons or these charge carriers so that they can move very very easily comparison to their normal case where their masses will be considered as a high but once the electron will move through the bands are assisted by the their motion will be assisted by the bands these mass the mass of the charge carriers or mass of the electron will 
appears very very small comparison to their rest masses so that it can move very easily consequently or apparently their mobility will be high they can flow inside the semiconductor crystal very easily so that is all the case about all the discussion about the effective mass of charge carry but our topic today topic is dens uh, density of state okay so before knowing the density of state are moving ahead in the discussion of density of state we should know about what is wave vector k wave vector k okay so we have to understand what this k is and what value k can have what is k actually your whole semiconductor is categorized by the energy band gap okay means energy difference between the conduction band and balance band okay so how these bands will be plotted it is nothing but a graph between e and k and what is your density of a state rho k number of available states on a k axis between k between k and and k plus dk number of available state between k point to k plus dk point per unit volume per unit volume of given semiconductor that is your rho k density of state so k is nothing but this axis okay and you have to know what is rho k density of state so you have very clear cut idea about what is k okay so k in other words k is a wave vector also so what is this k and what value can k takes density of state is how many what are the values between Uh, what are the values of k between k point to k plus dk point what are the available value what are the possible value per unit volume of given semiconductor material so we have to understand what what this k is and what value k can takes we know that for every value of k there is corresponding allowed energy e value means for each k point for each k point there are corresponding e point for each k1 there are e1 k2 e2 okay in on ek diagram ek diagram okay but what are the value that k can take what are the possible can every possible value on this k axis k can take whatever the value you can imagine over this k axis can that all the values k can take okay all these question because in quantum mechanics all the values should be discrete in nature this is the first law of quantum mechanics so what are the possible values that k can take okay this is the first question so for giving the answer of this question let's we discuss something so we know that from bloch function or bloch theorem the wave function of the electron inside the crystal structure is given by psi k r is equal to u k e to the power i k dot r okay okay where k is the this k is the propagation vector and this is the product of plane wave e to the power i k dot r is what plane wave and one periodic function that is known as bloch function or block function uk okay so wave function of the electron wave function of the electron which are trying to move inside any semiconductor can be represented by psi kr 
and that psi r is the product of one plane wave like e to the power i k data and one periodic function given by blows u k dot r and that whole idea is given by block or blocks okay that is your block theorem or block consideration for wave function of the electron which are trying to move inside the any crystal structure or inside the solid now so that's why this psi k because this uk is periodic in nature so overall this wave function will be periodic in nature like uh, such type of wave okay so you know that the probability of finding the electron can be defined by mod of psi square if psi is the wave function associated with the electron so probability of finding the electron at anywhere is represented by mod of psi k okay so the same thing is written here you know that the probability of finding an electron is equal to mod of psi square so we consider as now we consider a small piece of q which is made by semiconductor okay. and each side of this q is around 1 mm okay now these whatever you have considered electron can travels only inside this semiconductor it cannot go beyond beyond this considered geometry means whatever the electrons are available in the semiconductor and you are choosing uh, your semiconductor like in a cubical shape each side of that cube is around 1 mm 1 mm so electron cannot move beyond the 1 mm boundary that is the must case okay so so in other words you can say the electron is bound to the semiconductor which which means you can find the electron inside this cube not outside and now we know that the probability of finding the electron is periodic in nature because psi k psi psi k is equal to u k r e to the power i k dot r so u k is periodic function this i k r is a kind of plane wave which is also periodic in nature means overall this psi k a wave function associated with electron is periodic in nature okay so mod of psi square means probability of finding the electron probability of finding the electron should be also periodic in nature okay so what does periodic mean means if you are plotting the mod of psi square mod of psi square inside the considered geometry of 1 mm cube so it will be like that means a kind of periodic function will represent the probability density function mod of psi square it will be periodic in nature after certain period of time the probability of finding the electron will be nearly same like that okay so see 
these function are representing a kind of periodic nature and it will comes from this Bloch wave function of considered electron which are try to move inside the 1 mm cubical box which is made by a kind of semiconductor material. So, the electron is bound to the semiconductor which means you can find the electron inside but not outside and we know that the probability of finding the electron is periodic and it is an oxidatory function see a kind of oxidatory function therefore if the electron has to be found inside and not outside the probability is zero so probability must suppose this is the boundary of your q 0 to 1 mm per case so at the boundary the wave function will be always vanishes okay so if the wave function will vanish the probability density function which is comes from the wave function of the electron will also vanish. So, the probability of finding the electron at the boundary of the cube will be always zero. Okay. That is me. <coughs> so, which means psi should go to zero at the end or at the boundary which means that the wave function should from so, it is a kind of a standing wave in the medium. This is called the standing wave boundary condition. There is also a periodic boundary condition. Okay. So, it is like you have a string. So, this case is considered like a string and two ends of that string is clamped at two points and once you pull this string upside or downside what they will form they will form, they will create a kind of they will create a kind of standing wave and their displacement at the clamping end will be always zero kind of standing wave. Okay. So, it is like you have a string which is clamped at the two ends where the displacement is zero and it, it is given that it can oscillate periodically. Therefore, it will oscillate in the form of modes of oscillation of the string. Okay. Now, exactly like that if the wave function has to form a standing wave inside the medium like a clamped string it means that the round trip phase, I am now talking about round trip phase because the standing wave is always like that. See, phase goes, phase return. Okay. So, the round trip phase is like that. These points will be always in phase and this is a kind of standing wave okay so the round trip phase will be always in a same phase so exactly like that if the wave function has to form a standing wave inside the medium it means that the round trip phase k dot r k dot r generally represent the phase round trip phase means 2 k dot r and it will be always, it will be always in the same phase is equal to 2 pi, should be equal to 2 pi, okay. So, it means that the wave going from one end to other end and coming back add in a phase, that is what thing I want to say, to the initial wave. So, the condition to form a standing wave is 2 k dot r. 2k dot r is equal to m mul integer multiple of 2 pi or 2 pi. Okay. Now k is equal to 
k is what k is a kind of vector so k is, you can represent k like i k dot x plus k dot y plus z k z. <coughs> k is a vector and you can write this k vector in its component k x i k k y j k plus k z k k okay this is a kind of k vector so now k is equal to i k x plus j k y plus k k z so the electron moving from moving with k has x y z component k is a kind of wave vector it will give the direction where it will indicate the direction about where the electron is trying to move okay so always you can decompose the motion of the electron in its component okay so k has x y z component so if 2k if 2k dot r round trip phase of a standing wave is equal to integer multiple of 2 pi this means that each kx ky kz should also satisfy the condition individually okay 2 k dot r means wave vector k satisfies this condition so their individual components kx ky kz will also satisfy this condition individual component means what what initially what I consider? We consider the kind of cube shape semiconductor. Where each side are having one millimeter length. Now there is one random vector k. So you can decompose these vectors these k vector in their constituent let's suppose this is component x axis this is z axis this is y axis so this is kx this is this vector kx this vector is ky and this vector is kz so if k satisfies this condition, 2k dot r is equal to integer multiple of 2 pi, their individual component means kx, ky, kz will also satisfy the boundary con uh, this condition. Means like 2kx r, r is also vector and r can be written for this case r x i R Y J K R Z K K. So in this considered geometry, you can represent R X as a L X I, R Y as a L Y J, R Z as a L Z K K. Okay. For this, suppose this is L X, this is L, this is L X, this is L Y, and this upward direction is lz okay so you can rewrite this rx in term of lx ly lz so this relation in their individual component will be like 2k and in, ter in term of their component k can be right as a kx r can be right as a lx is equal to m multiplied by 2 pi okay so <coughs> so for uh, giving the for giving the individuality you can write in place of a m you can write m so 2 k x l x is equal to m multiplied by 2 pi 2 k y l y is equal to p multiplied by 2 pi where m and p and here 2kz in term of their z component 2kz lz is equal to q multiplied by 2 pi so all this p 
m, p, and q are what? A kind of integer like n. Means if 2k dot r standing wave form inside this considered cubical geometry, standing wave means a wave associated with electron, a wave function associated with the electron is a kind of standing wave. And the standing wave have a condition that the round trip phase for any standing wave will be equal to n multiplied by 2 pi. So, if it, the case like that, so for the wave function associated with the electron, they will also satisfy this condition means 2k dot r is equal to n multiplied by 2 pi. And if we de decompose these vectors k and r in their components like kx, ky, kz and lx, ly and lz, these individual components also satisfy this round trip phase condition and for taking that thing, you can write this thing 2kx multiplied by lx is equal to m multiplied by 2 pi, 2ky multiplied by ly is equal to p multiplied by 2 pi, 2kz multiplied by lz is equal to q multiplied by 2 pi, q multiplied by 2 pi, where m, p and q are nothing but integer. Okay. <laughs> so, it means that vector k itself is also discrete in nature, means 2 2 kx, what you got? 2 for this in x direction, let us suppose this x direction, 2 kx, 2 kx multiplied by lx is equal to m multiplied by 2 pi. So, this kx is equal to what? m 2 pi by lx. 2 and 2 got cancelled, m pi by l, okay. Where m is what? Integer. It can take the value 1 or 2 or 3 up to n multiplied by pi by l. So, between 1 and 2, there are lot of possible states, but this kx can take only the value pi by l or 2 pi by L or 3 pi by L, okay, kx in x direction of that cube, the k can take such value, okay. So, see, these k also showing the discreteness, this k value is also discrete in nature, okay, getting my point? So, it means that vector k itself is also discrete in nature. We already told what is discreteness and continuum. You can see my previous video. We can easily got introduction of quantum mechanics, where I already discussed about the discreteness and continuous nature of data set. Okay. So, it means that the vector k itself is also discrete. We go to the k space with kx, ky and kz. So, like kx, ky will be also discrete in nature, it will be also like pi by l, 2 pi by l or 3 pi by this l is lx, okay. Here in ky it is ly, 2 pi ly, 3 pi by ly like that okay? and so on. Similarly, kz, pi by lz. 2 pi by l z, 3 pi by l z. What does it mean? All the components of k in their x and y and z direction also discrete in nature. And if these components are discrete in nature, means k will be discrete in nature anyway. So, let's suppose this is your k vector and if you are decomposing this k vector in their components, all the components are discrete in nature. So, 
whatever the value of k according to that you are able to get a kind of a sphere and that that sphere contain a lot of number of k value possible k value but these value are discrete in nature not a continuum it will not a form a continuum numbers which are which can k can take the values okay these value are discrete in nature means the k can take a value and that value will be discrete in nature and these value can form a kind of sphere and that sphere is known as k space k space so the individual component of vector k is also discrete in nature so we will discuss the latter part okay and there the k can take the value like pi by l lx pi by 2 pi by lx 3 pi by lx in x direction k can take the value in y direction like pi by l y 2 pi by l y or 3 3 pi by l y k can take the value in z direction like pi by l z 2 pi by l z 3 pi by l z so like this value you can imagine what the value k can take and based on this value you can define the density rho k okay actually we are discussing the density of a state density of a state is what available energy state between k and k plus dk point per unit volume for any given semiconducting material now what are the available state in for k in any cubical shape box okay along x y and z now you know so from these value you can guess the density means available energy state in any particular direction okay so we will discuss the latter part in next video thank you thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates